any city can have a poet laureate, but San Francisco is really out San Franciscoing itself with its newest appointment, a drag laureate. With a $55,000 stipend in hand, the just announced winner of a months long process will reign for the next year and a half. I had a chance to talk with Darcy Drawlinger a few days ago with the promise that I wouldn't reveal that she's the city's choice until right now. Darcy, congratulations on the Drag Loria position. How does it feel? Thank you. It's amazing. I feel, I feel so honored to uh, get to be the first Drag Laureate. When the city announced that they were doing this program, did you jump at this chance? Did you think, I don't know? Uh, you know, it, it felt a little bit like it was tailor-made for me when looking at the, uh, the criteria of, of what uh, it took to be the Drag Laureate. Um, it, you know, it really did track for what I have been doing for the last 10 years in San Francisco. So we know what a poet laureate is, right? <laughs> what is a drag laureate? Someone who is fabulous. <laughs> um, I mean, I think a drag laureate is, is many things, but it's, it's both being fabulous and colorful, just like San Francisco is, but it's also creating bridges in the different communities, both in San Francisco and nationally. Now, you already have a job. <laughs> I've got like three. <laughs> One of them is running a highly successful club here in San Francisco, which, you know, is it for anyone, but it specifically caters to the LGBTQIA community. And this has been something you've been working on for a long time, but it's been yours for just the past few years. Yes, um, I, I bought out my business partners just before the pandemic, one week before the pandemic hit. And, but we, we made it through, we've come back stronger, we changed, we pivoted, and um, I feel like we've really um, created almost Oasis 2.0. And Oasis is, I just want to remind you, the largest drag-owned club in the United States. Is it really? It I is. didn't know that. It is. You're a business owner, which I'm sure was a part of the reason why you were chosen for this. Why else do you think that you got this? Well, I think that I have been um, a strong community member for a long time. Um, I've also created a nonprofit um, queer arts organization called Oasis Arts. Um, I've opened up a film studio with help with the uh, San Francisco Film Commission um, and the Raynham Foundation. So we, we've, we're doing a lot of things that are really um, making space for the, the large group that is the LGBTQ plus community in the Bay Area. A lot of people will now be looking to you as a symbol of San Francisco <laughs> drag, but also drag across the country, which has come under particular attack this year. Yes, and what I find so interesting and so heartwarming is that San Francisco created this position, the drag laureate position, before the drag community became under attack in, in the United States. So I feel like it really is a testament to where San Francisco puts the drag community in our kind of culture in San Francisco. And the fact that this was created before that really is a testament. Because here, I don't know what it is about San Francisco, but the drag community is such an important community, not just for entertainment, but also for you know fundraising and having a political voice. We had Jose Seria with the um, court system, with the Sisters of Professional Indulgence. So there is a history of drag um, in a sort of a higher place in San Francisco. I'm wondering how much you are thinking about Heclina right now. Heclina, the previous owner of Oasis, she just died suddenly not long ago. She really left her mark on not just the drag community, but just the community as a whole in our city and the Bay Area. So I'm sure she would be proud of you. I, or maybe I, cursing I, you out. Oh I don't gosh, know. She'd be jealous. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's been a tough one. You know, I, I've, I've known Heclina for 34 years. And uh, you know, I helped put her in drag the very first time, and we we opened the club together. We do Golden Girls together. We have a lot. Of, we did a lot together. So it's been a very very hard, a hard thing. But it's also a good reminder to live every day to its fullest, and um, you never know. So. Um, I think she, her legacy is going to be carried on for a very long time. She, she opened stages up for a lot of people and really changed the face of drag nationally. All right, so you have this title now. <laughs> and, you know, when you're the first, then you become the pattern for what people do after that, right? The pressure's on. Do you feel that pressure? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Good. But, but I'm also excited because, you know, I, I, I get an opportunity to car help carve out what this um, role is um, for San Francisco and hopefully be an inspiration for other um, cities around the country, even the world.
So final message, what is it that you want people to kind of get from your reign? <sighs> Don't stop laughing. It's very important. Um, care for one another. I think the most important thing is it's so easily, it's so easy for us to um, shut down and be disconnected from each other. Lift each other up, see each other, because if we can, if we can recognize our fellow humans, um, it really does change the way you walk through the world. And, and I will leave you with this. Be a little more fabulous every time you walk out the door. Because if you're a little more fabulous, you inspire other people to be more fabulous. And if everyone's a little more fabulous, there's that much less room in their heart and their brain for hostility, anger, and violence. And we all have the opportunity to change the world every day. I love that. And baby, I'm already fabulous. <laughs> I know. I know. Congratulations again. Thank you, B. <laughs> that was good. It was a fun conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and I was talking to Sister Roma earlier this week um, because she was on the committee. Oh. To, to pick the folks, which was, you know, exciting for her to yeah. be a part of this process. But I was also glad that she was involved because they had, you know, community stakeholders. Yep who uh, looked at this from all different angles. There are, there are many city agencies involved in the process, but also community groups and drag queens themselves. So it's, it's picked, you know, of your peers, yes. which I thought was, was cool. Yeah, it makes it a really nice honor to know that you're respected in your community and at large, really. I'm, I'm excited to see what she's going to do. Me too. Yeah. Um, there might be some people wondering about the money for this. Oh. So mm -hmm. just uh, something that's interesting is that uh, last year when this was being planned and budgeted for, we were in a different financial situation. In we the had city. a surplus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the. It's from last year's budget. Now we're facing a, a different situation. But Darcy's going to be in this role for a year and a half. So who knows where we'll oh, be? Nice. You know, as time goes on. But I just thought I should mention that.